spiritual mind treatment is our technique for shifting consciousness. And we can remember that we have five steps of spiritual mind treatment. Recognition, identification, affirmation, gratitude, and release. So what I would like is five people from the class, the sooner you come up, the sooner you get to pick your step, to come up and speak uh, and offer that step in the opening spiritual mind treatment of the class. So who wants to come up? Oh, what are you? Four. Okay, I'll be five. Okay, we've got gratitude and Jill, you remember how to do a treatment? <laughs> Come on, take step one. Okay, we're looking for someone who can really nail the affirmation. Affirmations are personal, they're present, they're positive. Now all of you are doing treatment work every day. Remember we did this well over a month ago. So what would the class like the treatment to be for? What do you want? Clarity. Clarity. My goodness, the prosperity. Prosperity. One more. Love. Love. So we're going to write clarity, prosperity, and love. Who really has a sense of clarity, prosperity, and love? Who even understands what those words mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not doing what they don't mean. We're not doing de denials here. We're doing affirmations. Okay. If it would make it easier, I could do three and somebody else could do four. Who wants gratitude? <laughs> I'll have gratitude. <laughs> All right, come on up. Let's see it. There you go. You work it out with Breezy. Okay. So in the affirmation step, we're going to confirm for this class, this is a treatment for the class, that we are clear, we are prosperous, and we are filled with love, or we are loving, or however you want to, to language that. It's going to be in the now, which it's not coming to us. It's going to be claiming it for everyone in the house, in the in the class. It's not about you. It's the house. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and in the first step, which is the recognition step, which is that God, spirit, whatever is everything, and you just go off on that however you want. And the second step, which is that that is what I am, you both can include clarity, prosperity, and love in that. And then Kristen's going to affirm that for us, and Sandy and Breezy are going to somehow include that, Sandy and the gratitude, and Breezy and the release. We're going to include the theme of the treatment in every step. Okay? You ready? Take a deep breath. Go, Jill. I recognize that there is one power and one presence in the universe that is clear, prosperous, and loving. And I myself am clear, prosperous, and loving. So I know for myself and for everyone here in this room, everyone present here at the center this evening, I know that we are clear in our lives and our decisions and our um, just in our everyday. I know that we are prosperous in everything we do, that money is coming to us in unexpected and beautiful and abundant ways that we can't even imagine at this time. It's already here. We open to receiving that prosperity. And I know that we are love. There's only love. So we are love. We exude love. We receive love. We give love at all times, here and now, and every day going forward. And with clarity and the knowing of prosperity, and the knowing of love in this oneness, I am very grateful. And I release that in love we are clear, prosperous, and full of love, and so it is. And, and so, so it is. is. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well done, well done. So a little bit of housekeeping.
thing, if anyone would like to learn how to run the camera with Carrie, uh, where is Carrie? Carrie's over there. She says it's really simple, and that way we'll have a few people in class to set the camera up and turn it on so that when Carrie's not here, or perhaps Carrie, for whatever reason, is not camera ready, uh, there's someone else to run the camera. So is there anyone that wants to learn how to run the camera? It's cool. It's a video camera. It's got it. Thank you, Rick. Will you see Carrie during the break? Good. And Kristen knows how, so that'll give us three people. That's good. Good, good, good. Now, well, she showed me last week. So that's four people. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> because the... Are you have a question? I'm sorry, I have a question about Don't the, be sorry. the treatment that we just did. I can't remember because I know that you said it. When you're treating in a group, are you supposed to use we or are you supposed to use, like, the they? We. That's what I thought. Okay. I, I, we, I, I. Okay. I, I, you, I, I, I. Actually, it wouldn't be I you, yeah. Kristen, it would be John, it would be Don, something like that. I, I, he, she, I, I. Okay. But the practitioner always treats the practitioner, so you are the one doing the treatment. And if you're doing the treatment for the class, then you wait until it's the time to affirm or realize a certain truth about the class, that we're present, that we're clear, that we have a great class, that, that we learn a lot, that we put these teachings into effect, and our lives get better and better and better, that kind of thing. And then it's, I am grateful and I let this go, because the practitioner is always treating the practitioner for and about the other person. And when it's all about you, it's I, 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 I. It's just all about you, so just let it be all about you. The entire universe is all about you, so take it. And you may have noticed that I'm uh, going to uh, focus a little bit more on spiritual mind treatment. I absolutely believe that this is a fantastic way to shift consciousness. However, before we get there, I want to check in and see how we're doing with our complaint-free <laughs> lives. How are we doing? Back to day one. Back to day one. <laughs> it just slips out. Yes, it does. Who else? Yes, Sandy. Back to day one for the third time. And she told me that I can give myself a break on that sort of. I figure once I've screwed up the day, the rest of the day is just open season. <laughs> the next morning is back to day one. So I don't have to beat myself up. Ten times in one day, okay, I'm back to day one. Like sure, well. this isn't meant to be abusive. It isn't meant to be punitive. It's meant to bring forth mindfulness. You know, if we could get a handle on the words that are coming out of our mouths, we would be amazed at how we get a handle on our lives. Jane. I have this uh, <coughs> I have a, uh, fan that Darcy gave me, and it says, a complaint, a complaint free Uh, world.com uh, or whatever. Right. But anyway, so on at this, mo this morning at the Y, uh, I caught myself, you know, uh, talking to this very nice guy, Stephen, about, and I was complaining. And so I, then I, as I walked out the door after I complained, I looked at this band and I thought, oh my God, so I went back in and I apologized. Well, you cleaned it up. Yeah, yeah, you're not sorry. What you did is you realized you've been complaining. I'm sorry is such a catch-all. And, and it really doesn't do what we think it's going to do. No. So a, a different way of saying that, and I'll always stop you and say you're not sorry. Because you're not. You're a powerful, creative, spiritual being. You're Jane Caldwell. Uh, Jane Christensen. <laughs> 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 you're Jane Christensen, you're a powerful spiritual being, you're not sorry. So what are some other more mindful words you can use other than I apologize or I'm sorry? What else can you say? I always say I misspoke. You misspoke, yeah, compared to what you wanted to now, but at the time you said exactly what you were feeling. I'm choosing differently now, Jane. Yeah, I actually just told the truth. I went back there and I said, oh, you know, I got this band and it says a complete free. And, and so I explained the whole thing. And, 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 
So you didn't say I'm sorry. No. Well, yay, because you just told us you went back and said you were sorry. And, and all of this is about paying attention to what we think and what we say. So you go back, it's great, and you go, you know, I've got this wristband on that says a complaint-free world, and I just spent half an hour complaining to you, so I want to shift that. It's all about shifting it. And you can go back and change the energy. You know, cause and effect are linked only until you have a new cause. So as soon as you put a new cause into effect, your effect is, is changed. And so you go back in and you say, you can say I misspoke, but I don't like that, even putting myself down from misspeaking. Susan. Take two. Take two. Let's do this again. Sandy. The word keeps popping up, aware. I'm aware. I'm aware of what I just did, what I just said. Said, yes. And I must say, I was, uh, he was really very pleased that I, I went back and Of said, oh, course, yeah. people want to be at a higher level. They really do, especially people in Asheville. Yes. Why, Darcy. Why do you not say I apologize? Is that it's a catch -up. It's a catch, -up. catch -up. And the, the, the two words, I am, carry with them the creative power of the universe. And when you say, I am sorry. Yeah, I don't. I am a sorry that. sort. But what is apologizing? I was wrong. I want you to forgive me. No, I'm more aware. Well, I just woke up. I can't believe what I just did. Let's do that over. Okay. That's a, a much higher vibration and more mindful and clear communication instead of I. They do this with kids all the time. You know, I apologize. They don't mean it. <laughs> they don't mean it, and it's just a power trip to try to disempower them so that the adults have more rule in the house, and it's a, 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 a very destructive part of forming personality, this, I'm sorry, I apologize. You know, you, you do something, and you say, I'm sorry, and then you turn around and do it again. I'm sorry, and you do it again. I, well, you're not sorry. So at the time, that's exactly where you were going, but now you have a second thought, and you're thinking you could do this better. And isn't that a great way to talk to someone? You know, I'm not happy with the way I just handled myself at all. Take two. I'm going to do it again. Great. And I didn't mean to go down that road, but I think it's important in this idea of shifting consciousness. We have so many opportunities to shift and if we start taking them, even though they're not the, the giant ones, they're just the little ones, then before you know it, we've shifted the whole course of our lives. Sandy. I kept telling myself I wasn't going to ask this question. In our line of work, the calls that we receive are regarding allergen illusions, if you will. One of the things that we are required to say, or you will be docked points, is I'm so sorry to hear that. Well, can you use a different phrase? I wish this hadn't happened. Because actually, I, I even we've been dancing was, around this yeah, for a couple of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> there, one lady was telling me what happened. I was like, "Oh my!" Was my response to what she said, mm -hmm. and I was talking to point because. Well, what about say, our company is so sorry? Instead of I, take somebody with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of I'm so sorry to hear that. Our company, everyone at our company is so sorry to hear that. Yes. Everyone yes. involved in this company is so sorry yes. to hear that. And then it's not all on you. Yeah, yeah. Like that. Yeah. yeah, that feels bigger and inclusive and dilutes the I am aspect of it. <laughs> Even though you are and you might end up not working at that company if you're not sorry and everyone there is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are Don't even creating <laughs> yes. Adrian. Feel sorry, but what's the point? Well, I'm just wondering for their points. Oh, just I would I would lose points over claiming that. Okay. You know, I've just fought way too long to stand up straight and tall and not be sorry. Right. I, I'll take responsibility for all the stupid things I've done, but I won't make myself wrong for them or put myself down or hold myself back. I just won't do it. It's not worth the points, it's not worth the job to me. But however you can wrap your head around it, it's not 
you know, if we talk about words as if they have power in themselves, mm -hmm. they don't. It's the energy around the word. Some people can say a word and it doesn't have the same experience as someone else. So if you can wrap your head around this idea of sorry, it's like some people come here and translate um, spirit to Jesus. You know, and if they can wrap their head around that, that's great. And sometimes you may find yourself somewhere where you need to translate Jesus into spirit. And if you can wrap your head around that, then you're fine. So it's really all about your response to it, your energy, and your feeling. What about I regret? I'm not going to do regret either. I'm not going to do regret. <laughs> I'm just not going to. I would just say again, Right, and she's talking about a script that she follows at work. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. she's talking about a script that she follows at work. Oh, so. That's too bad. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not too bad, Jane. It's great. It's great because what they're doing is they're being mindful of the words that come out of their mouths. And again, if we can get control of the words that come out of our mouths, we can get control of what happens in our lives. So this is simply a step to wake up a little bit, and you gave us the opportunity by uh, bringing, bringing it into the conversation, even though it didn't happen. I find that fascinating. So <laughs> we, we must have been a conversation ready to happen. So what else is happening on the complaint-free experience, Joanna and then Tom? Well, I've been doing really well. And today I was in my uh, the kiln room at uh, the clay, my clay studio, and uh, I I uh, broke two of my favorite pieces, greenware, and the word the F word came out of my mouth really loudly and powerfully, and the the uh, the whole kiln uh, area blew a fuse. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, the, really, it was. Right at that moment. <laughs> so my question is, is that, is that really a complaint? Or was I just releasing energy? I mean, you know, I wasn't like Well, you that. weren't in your joy, and you weren't going, huh, this is interesting. <laughs> so the level of energy that blew the electricity out of the building, I think we could safely say was in a complaining category. <laughs> yes. Well, it definitely shifted my energy. Mm -hmm. Then I said, wow, this is interesting. Yes, and, and so I wouldn't say I was doing really good. I think you did really good yesterday because you had a wonderful learning experience and you shifted, which is the whole point. The whole point is to shift. You're never going to shift unless you're aware of where you are and where you want to be. Tom. I heard this book, this Tibetan. His idea was to be happy when things went wrong. <laughs> yeah, but things don't go wrong. But I found myself complaining about other people's complaints. Right, <laughs> right, because we can be so spiritually superior. Yeah. You know, especially in metaphysics, we're so much better than the people who aren't spiritual, <laughs> as if there are any. Right. I, I you know, try to switch that around and go, okay, I'm happy, you know, that you're complaining about something, at least you're, you know, trying to make things better. Or Do something to make me feel better about it. Do you really want to do something to make them feel better? Well, um, my wife, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you weren't here yesterday, were you? <laughs> were you in the celebration yesterday? Uh, no. no. No, you were out here selling things. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you can't make your wife feel better, and my guess is you're not happy about them complaining. So. You're, you're creating uh, incongruence and, and dissonance inside of yourself because where you are and where you want to be is never going to happen. You're never going to make your wife feel better. Oh. You can make yourself feel yeah. better, oh. and your wife can come along if she wants to. Well, that's, that's more like right. And you're not, you're not anywhere close to being happy to hear someone complain. So you might as well be honest about that 
and go, well, this is really starting to trigger me off, and because the outside is a reflection of the inside, this must be something going on inside of me, so what a wonderful opportunity to grow. What a wonderful opportunity to look more closely at my own level of complaining, which is right below the surface, because I'm ready to complain about the complainer, and to release more of that and just be okay with people. Yeah. Being okay with people and being happy about their behavior are two different things. So let's not try to turn ourselves into somebody that we're not. Let's just come a little bit more into alignment with who we are. Freezy. I just had a quick question in regards to um, saying it out loud and in your head. Oh, I'm always a proponent for saying it out loud, especially directly to the person. Because that is so much more upfront and real. It well, clears I, the air. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering in regards to the, the, the complaint for the month. Is it, is it the one just in your head count? Or just oh, no, no. We talked about that. No, no. You've got to pass. I forgot. You close your mouth. Okay. Even if you're going... Close your mouth. That's the first step. Don't let it out your mouth. We can move into the enlightened step of never thinking it later. But right now, we're all thinking it. We're all thinking it, and what we're doing is getting a hold of our mouths. Shut the mouth. You know, it's so important. Don't let it out. We teach the power of our word. And then we just spew words around as if they have no power. Yeah. Michael. I find complaining people that are annoying. I realized this week that I am. I complained about what I thought I did. I right. caught myself quite a few times. I went out a couple of times. I of course you did. Everybody did. Everybody in the room complained at some point in the last week. So what we're doing is we're not using this as a way to put ourselves down. We're using this as a way to wake up, to be more mindful, to exercise some discipline over the, the power that we wield to create our lives. It, it showed me how much well, I told my thinking in a different way. Good, good. And then you could shift it. Yes, the art of shifting consciousness. It's all about shifting it. And we can't shift it unless we know where we are. I finally got my uh, dog's car titled in my name and registered and inspected and all of that today. And it's a stick shift. And as I'm driving it, I have to know when I've revved out to the lower gear and need to put the clutch in and shift it up to a higher gear. I have to know that, otherwise I'll either never go fast enough or I'll blow the engine up in first gear driving down the I-240 at 60 miles an hour. I'll do that. So there's an awareness that's coming to it. I mean, that's true. We've got to know when to shift it. We've got to know which gear we're in. We don't want to go from fourth to second by mistake, you know, instead of going to fifth. We need to know where we are. We need to know when we're ready to shift and how to shift it. And then we go into a whole different world. Isn't a gear in a transmission a whole different world? You start off on low gas and you're going faster than you were on high gas. You know, it's great. You gotta let out the gas, push in the clutch, shift the gear, let out the clutch, push in the gas, and you're on low gas, and you're going faster than you were on high gas a second ago in a lower gear. This is shifting. Your life is gonna take off. Your money's gonna take off. Your relationships are gonna take off. Things are gonna happen because you're moving into a higher gear, a higher level of consciousness, a higher level of honesty, a higher level of communication than you were. And there's nothing wrong with third gear, but fourth gear is better if you want to go faster. Carrie. Uh, I was just going to say, because I did this whole thing, like the 20, the no complaint, the complaint for your wall thing, and I got to the 21 days, which was very interesting, though, to work in the restaurant business. It, it took about five months, so just so you know, it took me about five months to get to one day. But in the restaurant business, it's just interesting because I overhear a lot of, you know, a lot of conversations at the, at the tables, and a lot of it is kind of complaining, but um, I find my, myself it's easier to um, kind of respond when they try and, like, draw me in. And like I heard, I had one lady so like you know I write on the top of my check so I put you know today is the best day ever and it was one day when it was a weekend when it was um, raining 
And as I'm walking away and she's reading it, she said under her breath to people, well, if it stopped raining, it'd be the best day ever. And I turned around and I'm like, today is the best day ever, even if it is raining. And she's like, wow, I didn't think you would hear that. <laughs> <laughs> and I just turned around and walked away. Good and I for you. Like, I think it's interesting because it's, it's, it's easier for me to respond to people not negatively. Good, it because you're me. practicing. Yes. Yeah. How are your tips going with mm -hmm. less complaining going on inside of you? Um, they've actually been better. Yeah, yeah. I'm working with Lynn, so I, I track it and everything and stuff like that. I do have people who like who have questioned my motives. <laughs> so putting affirmations on my check. They're like, so do you want us to tip you more money? I'm like, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yes, but that's not why I put it on there. I didn't even put it on there for you. I put it on there for me. Yeah. So, but so, yeah, it's, it's really fun uh, just because I get more positive back from it. A lot of people like were being like, oh my gosh, you're such a mind reader. This so works with what's going on in my life right now, you know? Good. So, so, so back to your tips just to reinforce this. When you complain less, you have more money. It's simple. When you complain less, your body is healthier. It's simple. When you complain less, your car works better, your house is cleaner or you like it better, your clothes are better, your whole life is better because you're not focusing on what's not working, which is creating what's not working, what I don't want, what I don't like, everything is terrible, it's awful, it just sucks. You get that. That's how your life is. You've got to flip it to something, even if you're flipping it to the neutral of, okay, the Buddha said whatever is, is. So we're just going to stay with that. Okay, even if you go to total neutral, your life gets better because you're not dragging it down. Nina. So I've had an opportunity to shift my attitude for a number of things have happened to things. Just things, and like cars, and washing machines, and refrigerators, and microwaves. <laughs> and I choose to be happy. All that stuff can happen on the outside. The inside of me is happy. Exactly. Great. So it, it's not necessarily an outer, outer, outer reflection. What's on the well, just because you've got things in a little bit of turmoil now doesn't mean that it's not all unfolding to a greater outer perfection. Yeah. There'll be better products, right? Yeah. Well, there'll be better in your life. Yeah. So I choose not to get upset. We have to choose not to get upset. Bash my car into another car. <laughs> you looking for a new car? Pardon? Are you looking for a new car? No. You Not haven't been me. thinking about getting a new car? No. Okay, let's just check. No. I love my car. Good. Okay. It's a nice car. It's a Mercedes. Yeah. Jane and then Susan. Um, is that, now, I, I generally get a thrill about with other people and I get along with people and things like that. This is a new Jane. Huh? <laughs> this is a new Jane. A new Jane. Yeah. But the thing is, I just uh, what I realize is I get really angry at myself. We know. Yeah. And so I really go on and on and on about myself. So about. stop complaining about yourself. And that is a complaint, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> Absolutely. About Absolutely. You are an amazingly wonderful person. You are a writer. You went on treks up giant mountains. You. It doesn't matter. You are an amazing person. I had you in Prac 1 class, and you would come up with words of wisdom that would stop the class. It's like, where did this come from? Which Jane is coming into class tonight? <laughs> so you have within yourself an amazing being. And when you beat yourself up, I think you're just trying to play small and hide. That's all I think it is, which is what everybody does. We beat ourselves up, we make ourselves wrong so that we don't have to be this amazingly powerful being that we are, so that we can pretend that we're nobody, so that we don't have to do anything. Well, don't bother me, I'm just nobody. Except the truth is, is that you're not nobody. Nobody's nobody. Susan. Um, before I'm saying what I'm going to say, I wasn't here for a few weeks. I am so happy to be back. Yeah. <laughs> I just love you, I got in here, and I love who we are together. So I just, 
that just came out. Okay. Um, if one was looking for a new car, where would one focus and how do you do that? I am looking for a new car. I don't know. I got a call from my husband this morning that said he just heard an ad that Buick's got uh, enclaves for five years of no interest and he wants me to go buy one. <laughs> I said, don't you want me to wait for you to come home? He said, no, just go ahead and go look at them and buy one. So that's the way I buy a new car. <laughs> Priuses are great, just go buy one. You know, if you're feeling like, I find this very ironic that I just got the Xterra title over into my name and now I'm probably gonna sell it. Because if I have an enclave, I can just put the dog in the back of the enclave, and the whole reason I got Bliss a car is because I didn't want her in the back seat of my Lissaber. I mean, these are the levels of life I live at. I don't want my dog in my back seat of my sedan. It's too cold to drive her around in an open pickup truck, so I need a new car. I had that car in 24 hours, free given to me. Now, it took me four months to get everything notarized and signed and all of that, but still, it was my car. So, I think cars are easy. Okay. If you want a car, just go get a car. There's a car calling to you, Susan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm thinking. Good. I was just going to say, when she starts looking, the car is going to find her. Yeah. Right. The perfect car will find her. Right. I and I love my LeSabre. The reason I haven't gotten a new car is because they don't make LeSabres anymore. I love that car. It's got a six-body trunk. <laughs> I can put as much in the trunk and the backseat of that Saver as I can pile in the back of John's pickup. I absolutely can. So I love my Saver. It's a little cushy ride. And the only reason that I'm thinking maybe in a, you know, I'll just go buy a new Buick is that it's a Buick, and I love Buicks. Susan and then Christian. When you're getting rid of that Xterra, let me know because my son is also looking for a car. Is it? It's, it is a, a hot rod car. It's a stick shift. You know, it's got the luggage racks on the top and the seats come out and, you know, it's got all that. And it's got that big square. Um, no, the big square, um, not a hinge, it's a, it's a thing you hook up. Boats and stuff too. Yeah, hitch. Oh, yeah. It's a hitch. Big square trailer hitch on the back. A real macho one. That was my son's. It's got a fish on the back. You know, not a Jesus fish. It's got a snook on the back. <laughs> Kristen. Um, I choose to go. I choose to buy used cars because that's what I prefer. And I choose to go on Craigslist because you can get really amazing deals. My car that I got was an amazing deal on Craigslist. So what we might want to do is treat. Treat for, the car. Treat for your car because your car is unique to you. <laughs> And, and I've often found things by opening up to it and letting it find me. And that doesn't mean that you don't go on Craigslist or you don't shop around, but there's something that happens and all of a sudden there's that connection. As soon as you are open to receive your car, what you are looking for is looking for you. Because we are a match universe. You can't want a car and not have your car exist. That would make an empty hole in the universe. There would no longer be oneness. The unified field theory would fall apart. Time and space wouldn't exist, and we would not be here. That's why I can say every Sunday morning, I know that God is in this place because we are here. The very fact that we are here is evidence of the presence of the oneness of the divine. Can I tell you a story that manifests Sure, and then Adrian. I've been wanting to put a kitchen into my house, a second kitchen into my house forever, and procrastinating and feeling bad about myself and complaining about myself. Mm -hmm. And then I, I just really let it go. And I got a phone call from somebody that I know casually from my dance community. We meet up in Louisiana in places for festivals. And I must have said to him at one time, if you're ever in Nashville, give me a call. Well, he was in Nashville, and gave me a call. And, um, Showed my hospitality and said, Oh, well, certainly stay over. And I took him on a tour of my house and I showed him the space and I said, This is what I was hoping to do, but I just haven't done anything. And he said, I'll, I'll put in the kitchen for you. 
Wonderful. And then I said, what? And then he said, yeah, your, your son can help me. I can do that. And I said, that's great. What would you charge? He said, I'm not going to charge you anything. Yeah. The next day we went shopping, soap, a refrigerator, cabinets. And the day after that, the kitchen was in. Yay! Oh, yay! That's what happens when we are clear. Things just happen. It's not that we have to will them or push them or make them. We just know that we're going to have a kitchen in there and you let it go and you're loving and generous and you get that back. Yeah. I was going to say, do the same thing with your car because how you did that, you like it. I just remember sitting here and I got a car eight years ago and I really I missed this kind of car that I had when I was single. And so I had my baby and I had a van and blah, blah. And I said, no, I don't want a van anymore. I want a car. I want the car that I used to have. So I just... One day driving in my van saying, I want that car. I really want that car. This is the kind of car I want. I want this color. This. And I was just talking out loud to my baby in the back seat. When I got to the mall, I sat down, forgot it. She's playing. Told this girl about, oh, I'm thinking I might get a car. So I just kind of did this for a couple of weeks. And after like totally forgetting about it, I got a phone call. I guess I did something on the internet that I said I wanted to look at a car. They called me and said they had the exact car. And there was, they were going to give me the exact payment that I wanted. And, the, and everything was exactly the way I wanted. And I thought, oh, my God. And now I'm just remembering how this works. I was just telling her. So I'm really excited. So when you finally let go, release, yeah. it happened. And well, I got the car. I'm actually forgetting that I've gotten four cars for free in my life. We're <laughs> <laughs> about to have five. We're <laughs> about to have five. That's awesome. Oh, OK. Really? That's what I did. Good, good. We are the ones creating our lives. When we get lost in what's not working, we get a life that is not working. And then we get caught in the cycle of looking at a life that doesn't work and then saying it doesn't work, which creates a life that doesn't work, which we then look at that doesn't work and we say it. And we've got to stop the cycle somewhere. And the easiest way to stop it is right here. Right here. You know, look at me. <laughs> stop it from coming out of your mouth. If you stop it from coming out of your mouth, you'll have to think about it. And if you think about it, you'll begin to change the way you think. And when you change the way you think, life will become easier. Life will become better. And maybe it'll look a certain way, and maybe it won't look a certain way, but it will become better. Life gets better and better and better. It's like riding a wave. And when we're not in alignment with that evolution of life manifested as us, then it's a struggle. So when we're fighting against that flow of life, and I don't mean just give up and say I'm going with the flow, and that doesn't mean that means I don't have to go to work anymore. Not like that. <laughs> but, but there is a force. Ernest would have called it a force for good in the universe, and you can feel it moving through you. You can feel it lifting you up, and when you're in alignment with that, things get better, and when you're not in alignment with that, life is hard. Maybe you've experienced life being hard before. So when life is hard, you're out of alignment with something, and you need to bring yourself back into alignment, and sometimes you really want that thing. Because it's pretty and it's shiny and you're sure if you get it, it'll make you happy. And you really just want it, but it's hard. So when that's happening, there's something that's not in alignment with you having that. And perhaps right away, we would just want to go directly to happy instead of waiting for us to get the pretty shiny thing and feeling bad that we don't have it and work on the inside and then let it go. Let it go and it might take weeks, months, years. Who cares? Who cares? If we are eternal beings, then what's the rush? Well, I gotta have this Prius by next week. I gotta come to class and show everybody my pretty Prius. What difference does it make, really? If you get it when you go home tonight, or if you get it in a month, or even if you get it in a year, does it really matter? When we're hooked into the time aspect of time and space, then we're in a limited reality. And when we can shift out of that and simply know that everything is great, that of course I have my perfect and right car, maybe it's getting made more pretty for me. You know, 
maybe because it's mine, it's had a little, little tune-up work done and some tires and a detailing and getting ready for me. It's all prissying up or Priusing up. <laughs> you know, however you want to see it, that, that, that disengagement with the outer world of effect that seems to rule so many of us, whether we're in this class or whether we're on this planet, that ability to disengage frees us up to make the shift. And that's why it's so important to learn how to let go. But if you're going to learn how to let go, you're going to have to look at your control issues. And you know that's where complaining is coming from. Talking about complaining is a direct attack on your need to control. And I'm guilty of it. Just We're going to go to guilty. I am aware of my <laughs> propensity to love to control. I love to control. I do. And when that doesn't happen, I have to really practice going with the flow. My two grandchildren are such great teachers <laughs> at how I'm not in control. I went out shopping last night. I bought them all kinds of food. It's the exact food they eat at home, except they won't eat it. So we had to go back out shopping this afternoon. And they had to pick a different brand, same thing, only a different brand, a different color, a different twist to it, so that they would eat it. And I was, just relax. <laughs> this is a memory. When are you going to have these kids? Aiden's 10 already. You know, he's 10, the little one is 6. They're going to grow up before you know it, and then they won't want to go grocery shopping with you. So just enjoy it and relax. But you know, there's that part of me that was, I bought this for you. I know you eat this. You shut up and eat it. <laughs> but that was too much like my childhood, so I can't go there with them. And then I have an opportunity to relax and to notice that I'm complaining a lot about whether or not they eat or not. Really, do I care if they eat? Do I care if we go to the store? It all worked out fine. You know, everything is great, but not complaining brings us right up face to face with our desire to control. And why do we need to control? Why do we feel that we need to control? Because we don't trust. Because we feel alone. And so if we're all alone in the world, we might need to keep our dukes up. We might need to watch out and make sure that we know exactly what's coming because if something comes out of the blue, it's not a happy thing, it's a oh no thing, it's a bad thing. So if we have that belief system going on, that we're not trusting, we're not safe, we're not secure, we're not relaxed, then we will want to control. And we will notice that we want to control by hearing the complaints come out of our mouths. I think it's a really handy trick to be able to get back to some core issues of what is going on. If we really trust that spirit is all that there is, that we are a manifestation, an individualization, an incarnation of God itself as me, what do I have to be worried about? What do I have to be afraid of? I have the entire universe, even more. There are multiple universe layers going on all at once. I have all, the all and all, in me, as me, is me, now, supporting me, moving me forward. All of evolution is moving me towards a better and better life, greater and greater levels of awareness. What in the world do I have to be worried about? I just make it up. And I make it up because I don't feel that, that I'm this amazing being. I tell a story that I'm small, so I don't have to be who I am. And then I hide my head, and that's when life really gets awful, is when we hide. So listen to the complaints coming out. <coughs> Check out where we feel we need to run other people's lives. Like you come into this great restaurant, you're having this great service, you've got this great meal, and all you can do is sit there and complain about the freaking weather? <coughs> well, what is it that we feel we need to have an opinion about someone else or try to control what they say while they have their lunch? That's their life. It's called a boundary. So we can look at that, we can bring it back home, 
I don't feel connected. I don't feel safe. I don't feel supported. I don't feel that oneness. That is the only reason we try to control anything around us, the economy, the politicians, the relationship, the job, whatever it is, the dog, another good teacher in my life. <laughs> why, we, why we ever feel that need to reach away from ourselves and try to hold something else is because we don't have a hold of ourselves. So that's what we want to do with this shifting consciousness. That's why we're shifting. Yes. So la 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 la. Lindy. What do you mean? Lindy? Yeah. yeah. So I am totally on with this train of thought and have been practicing it a lot, especially with my daughter who's two. And so what happens is like I'll do little things and I'm like, okay, I'm trying to control her, just let it go. But then the then the safety stuff comes up. Like she doesn't want to hold my hand in a parking lot or and that turns into a tantrum or whatever. So then those are the things where I'm like, okay, I'd be controlling, but I'd be controlling because I need her to be safe. So, but well, that having still, her is, is okay. Yeah, but there was Wanting like, her to listen to you and to do it your way yeah. is different. Yeah, I just feel like there's a power struggle even over a safety issue, you know? Right, right. So it's your job to keep her safe. It's her job to defy you. Right. <laughs> you know, kids who don't go through the terrible twos don't mature correctly. Oh, then she'll mature very well. Yes. Yeah, so the only thing she has going on psychologically right now is I am not the mommy. I am not mommy. I don't know who I am, but I'm not mommy. So anything that comes up in order to establish a sense of identity inside of herself has to be met with no. And that's building something that is other because up until now she hasn't known the difference between the two of you. A baby, an infant, cannot even tell the difference between themselves and their mother. They have no reference of that. So as you hit two, it's, oh, I've grown. I'm not mom. Wow, how cool is that? And children who don't do that have, have a lot of difficulty in establishing a sense of identity later on that you want for her. You want her to be a strong woman. Mm -hmm. So in the meantime, if she's in danger, you pick her up, and if she screams and yells, that's okay. I need to control your screaming and yelling. You don't have to be happy with me. You just go ahead and be your own little individual self. I'm not going to let you get run over by a car. That's all. <laughs> just don't have any heat on it. Right. If it is, I want you to want this because I want you to be that way, then it gets sticky. Yeah. With anybody. I want you to like the TV shows I like. How many of you have ever been in a relationship and all of a sudden you started doing things you never did before? You started eating and drinking things you never had before? You started watching things on TV you never watched before? Yeah, that's sticky. That's not clear. It's okay to do that if that's what you want to do. If you go, wow, I met this person and they introduced me to Indian food and I love Indian food. I never had Indian food. This is fantastic. It's different. But if all of a sudden you're drinking beer and eating burgers and watching football because that's what the other person does and you really don't want to do that, but you want them to like you, that's stick. So any other sharing about the complaining thing? I think this is just great. I really think we're on to something here. Tom. Yes. Um, I'm just thinking of another one of my things. Uh, you know, people who want me to not like <laughs> yeah. So can you love that person and let them not want you to like someone and just not care? I mean, I find not caring to be a very powerful uh, psychological tool. I, I, I love you, and I'm going to love them, and that's okay. I mean, there are people in this center that would love everyone in the center to hold their same political views. That's why we don't talk politics here. Because you don't know that the person sitting next to you is on the other side. So we don't bring it up. So you know, you already know. You know if someone is trying to get you to not like someone, that that's challenging your sense of self. So just shift it. Make up a, a, a whole different reality. Bring out love. You know, I am just going to be such a being of love that I'm going to love everybody. That's all. But as soon as you try to get someone to not do anything or to do anything, you're just as hooked as they are.
because now you're not liking that they don't like, I don't like what you're doing. Well, I don't like what you're doing. Well, I don't like what you're doing. Well, I don't like what you're doing. And before you know it, you're dropping bombs on each other. You know, metaphysically or concrete. God, Joanna blew out the electricity in a whole building. It was pretty wild. And I will say that my horoscope this morning said that I might need to, uh, to get an electrician today. So I don't know what how that all played into it, but okay. <laughs> so how many of you are uh, not doing spiritual line treatments? Yeah, not, not. How many of you are not? How many of you are not doing them every day? Not every day. Yeah. I mean, I have practitioners that are not doing treatments every day. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to practice this a little bit, and we're going to go over doing treatment work for other people if you want to. But it's really important to do this for yourself because it helps you shift. Have you noticed? that before a spiritual mind treatment and after a spiritual mind treatment, you feel different. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that? For me, and forgive me for you uh, people who hold meditation in high, high regard, for me, treatment work is more effective in shifting than meditation. Meditation's really good for me. A lot of times I don't like it. Mm. <sighs> 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 <laughs> <laughs> Some days, that's my meditation, but it's really good for me. The treatment work, I can go for it, I can think, I can be big, I can direct, I can focus, I've got lists, I'm doing stuff. Meditation, I'm being. And frankly, for me, the doing is easier than the being, but i got to have the being or else I'm out of balance. So when we do treatment work for ourselves, things shift. Whether or not they show up exactly the way we did the treatment or not, it doesn't matter. We feel different. If we do, do a treatment that we are at peace, our lives become more peaceful. And we may say, well, I wanted peace in this relationship with my neighbor who keeps throwing their trash over into my yard or whatever. You know, I wanted peace here and all I got was a greater sense of well-being in life. No, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. When we treat for money and we feel more secure when our bills come in the mail, whether or not more money has shown up yet or not, our lives become more prosperous and more abundant. Are you saying something? Is that your hand? Yes. Put it all the way up. Thank you, Kristen. Um, so in my last relationship, she's very Christian, and um, so she always blesses her meals before she eats. And that's something that I haven't done in like years, but she's very adamant that I do it. And mm -hmm. so I started doing it. She's very adamant that I say that, and I'm like, well, I'm not praying to God, I'm going to treat. So I started doing treatments before meals, and it's like a really easy, and they're quick, but it's a really easy way to get treatment in every day, like several times a day. Right? Not to, like, my Kristen's doing her treatment right before she eats. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. However you do it. However you do it. Tom. Uh, I was just thinking that for me, Reiki is like putting meditation and mind treatment together. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, yeah. It's Great. just a, it's a more silent version. It's all energy. It's all vibration. Whatever you do to make yourself feel better, if you go for a walk, if you watch a sunrise, <laughs> if you love someone, if you open, if you let go, all of those things will help you to shift. But keeping your mouth shut when a complaint comes, starts to come out, I believe is really, really important so that we can look at what's going on. We used to have a practitioner here named Hyacinth, and we'd, we'd be doing something, and she would go, whoa, wait a minute, back up here. And so we would back up the conversation to see where it had gone astray. And so I do that inside of myself. Whoa, walking around Ingalls. This is a first world problem. <laughs> that I'm in Ingalls with an unlimited amount of funds, two very healthy and wonderful grandchildren, school is out, and they don't want 
Tostitos, they want Doritos. Okay. You know, what is going on inside of me that I have to make that bad or wrong? When I can open up to the love and the light and the life that is going on, then I can experience my life at a higher vibration, a higher level, and things will work out. When I walk around and I go, ah, we're in front of the frozen food. Gosh, I don't have any room in my freezer. I just bought dog bones from the, the butcher in Hendersonville. I can't buy those popsicles. I don't have any place to put it, and I'm cold. Whoa, wait a minute, back up. This is a wonderful experience. This is a great day. This is the best day ever. And I use real obvious examples from me so that we all feel like we're in this together. You know, when we can stop and say, wait a minute, what just happened? Why did I get angry? Why did I become afraid? Why did I just get a knot in my stomach? Why did my blood pressure just go up? What just happened here? What did I do that all of a sudden these things are coming out of my mouth? I want to back up, take two, have a do-over, and see what I can do about taking myself to where I want to be instead of where I just went unconsciously. It probably had a lot to do with unresolved issues of childhood and all of this stuff that therapy would bring out into your awareness, although not necessarily hope you heal. So, yes. I just want to say, when you, the spiritual mind treatment, that to receive a note in the mail from you or John that we, you are on my list this yeah. week, yeah. and I believe for you, da, 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 that it's just every time those come from you or from John, it is a time when something big is going to happen that week. And I just feel so supported and just kind of go, yeah. And we love to do that. We love to do that. We love to have that connection because it's a very intimate connection that we have with people. Even though we have nothing to do physically with each other, we have this wonderful connection with people. So when we do spiritual wine treatment for ourselves, we have a general opening, shifting, softening of ourselves. And I can tell with people when they've stopped doing their spiritual practice. I mean, I've, I've gone up to practitioners and said, you're not doing your spiritual practice, it's all over you. <laughs> it's all over you. And anyone who has eyes to see can see it. So what I would recommend is that you go back to doing your spiritual practice and whatever's going on, if you need to come in and talk, you can come in and talk. And we'll see what's going on. But stay in that place of shifting, of shifting. And if you find yourself complaining, which chances are everybody will at some point in the rest of their lives, <laughs> then back it up and see what happened. What happened? And sometimes when we get really wonderful feelings of openness and connected and excited and success and prosperity and health and wholeness, sometimes it scares parts of us. And then it triggers off some unconscious beliefs that happen and because they're unconscious and we don't know about them until we hear them coming out of our mouths and we go, wait a minute, I haven't been on day one for days, I've been on day zero and I haven't even noticed it. I'm the one who's complaining in my world and I complain about blah, 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 so what's going on? And then you take it back and you look at yourself, what's happening, what are you afraid of and, and what is that about in an infinite world where uh, life is eternal, and we are the power, and love is the only reality. What in the world have we got to be afraid of? We can't even be afraid of dying. Dying's great. Okay, let's take a break. <laughs> <laughs> over treatment two weeks, but I'm going to do it again because I really want us to be comfortable with it, to understand it, and most importantly, to use it. Someone said, well, I read the Creative Thought magazine and I read the treatments in every day. Does that count? Well, of course it does, because what we're doing is we're shifting. Whatever it does, downloading Margaret's artwork from the internet, 
and shifting in the middle of a crisis at work. It shifts. <laughs> yeah, that's what Sandy wondering. did today. It shifts. Whatever you do to shift is so important. And, and it doesn't matter. Um, yesterday I bought our plane tickets for our beach trip to the beach on between Christmas and New Year's. And we had a little bit, John and I had a little bit of a conversation about not going this year. And, and I thought, no, that's a strained conversation. That's a we don't get to have what we want conversation. I don't want that. So I shifted that and bought plane tickets, and I felt much better. <laughs> and when I told John, he felt much better. So I'm not saying all of this has to be really spiritual. You know, sometimes you shift it with a brownie. Sometimes you shift it with a, a television show. God is everything. Spirit is everything. We live in a reflective and vibrational universe. The outer is always a reflection of the inner. So anytime you are manipulating the outer in a way to open yourself up, it's all you. What are you going to do for you? You're going to get a massage? Great. You're going to meditate? Great. You're going to do treatment? Great. You're going to go for a walk? Great. You're going to listen to a joke? Watch a funny video? Doesn't matter. Great. You want to shift that. But in addition to that, I really encourage you to use this wonderful tool that we have called spiritual mind treatment because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it will shift whatever is going on. Whether or not you choose to um, focus it on a specific thing or whether it's a general treatment, whether that specific thing manifests upon opening up your eyes or not. It doesn't matter. It will shift the way you feel and you'll have a different experience in life. So I brought you some handy dandy handouts. <laughs> Let's take one. It's just a little reminder about the steps of treatment and some examples of what that languaging might be. Oh, let me have one, Donald. Thank you. Um, can I ask you a question? Is it, it is in regard to this terminology. You know, you use this, uh, the uh, mm -hmm. words like power, presence, spirit, uh, God, and all yes. that sort of stuff. But the one thing I have found is as soon as the term God is used, it makes it dualistic. Don't use it. Okay. Scratch it out. It's in here. Scratch it out. Okay. Don't use it. Okay. I knew a guy in Oregon 30 some odd years ago. He was a realtor, and that was when. Um, it was back in the early 70s when there was a, a big recession going on, and homes in Eugene, Oregon were boarded up. The market was so off, it was kind of reminiscent of 2008. Um, and he was a realtor, and he was prospering. And his treatment was, okay, big guy, it's you and me. Now this is what I want. Okay, we're done. <laughs> Can he do that? Is that spiritual enough? Well, evidently it was. It was. You know, personally, I have issues with the male anthropomorphic deity, but those are my issues. Mike. Well, thank you. Because I get lost in all these words and Fluffiness. Fluffiness. Yeah, don't like go fluffy. Yeah, don't talk. <laughs> 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 that, oh, oh, that sounds like you. <laughs> when, I, when I expressed the same issue to my dad when we were talking about a course about treatment, and he says, well, I got the treatment for you. He said, you ready? And I said, yeah. He says, God is, I am, I know, thank you, let's go. Right. <laughs> right. Right. God is, I am, I know, thank you, let's go. I am? I am. The middle step. Affirmation. I am healthy, wealthy, wise. Okay. I am peaceful. I am joyous. I am on top of everything. I am at the height of my career. I'm on top of my game. I always know what to do and when to do it. I have legions of angels making my way clear. And this is me, egotistical Barbara. <laughs> I have red carpets rolled out and every door is open as I walk forward into my day. 
Those are my treatments. Yeah, nifty. Feel nifty, Jane. Feel nifty. Lindy. I think I was getting hung up on the idea that I had to do it as soon as I woke up before, you know, before my daughter gets up. But then today she got up early, so I did it with her. And it was so cute because I, as I was affirming, she just kept going, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow, you totally get this, don't you? Excellent. Excellent. Good job. Good job. So on this sheet, and this is just as a, a little um, discussion point or reminder or stimulus. You don't have to do it like this. For that matter, I would appreciate it if you didn't. But step one is I, and then you're going to want to put your name in. Put your name in just to reinforce that this is you. You're not starting off a treatment with you, Donald. No, it's all about me. We started off in the class, the practitioner always treats the practitioner. It's all happening inside of me. And because there's only one, and this is where it gets a little abstract, then you and me are no different. We're the same. So as I know in me about you, something happens in your world. It's the most amazing thing. It has such a sense of wonder and awe and mysticism and connectedness. Sometimes it feels very magical the way things happen. Because when I know something in me, Victoria's life changes. But I have to start with me. I can't try to fix Victoria. I can't try to change Victoria. I can't try to convince Victoria. That's not a treating inside of me. I treat in me. In me. And sometimes, especially in the early days, I would spend hours in treatment. Now granted, I didn't have much of a life. But I would spend hours in treatment and I would stay in this first step of trying to get a sense of what God is, what spirit is, what life is, what's it all about, Alfie, you know, what, what that is. And I was so grateful when I got the pictures of, from the Hubble telescope, when they sent the Hubble telescope out, and it started sending back pictures of this. You couldn't tell, and you can't tell even today, whether you're looking at something huge or tiny. Is this a nebula that is so big there's no way our brains can even wrap around it? Or is that something that is so tiny it's a photo from an electromagnetic microscope? You know, you don't know. And so you start to get this sense that the, the big and the little are all the same. And that there is stuff that's so far out from my petty little world at that time that just would take me out into other realms. And sometimes I would feel this energy that would just get really, really big. And then there'd be like a, a beat or a movement or a pulse to it all. And I would just let myself go, letting go of all of the things that I thought that life was and that I was into this idea of greatness. And I don't mean like success and greatness. I mean like this huge thing. If, if we're grappling with something in the universe, I mean, even the Hubble telescope pictures are still in this universe. And then I just so cavalierly say, well, there are universe layers piled on top of each other right here where we're sitting. And that's where I would want to go. I would want to go to where my brain just exploded. And then I didn't have anything to wrap it around. And I would just hang out. So that's where I want you to look at it, instead of getting your words right. Well, I, Barbara, know that there's only one, pre one power, one presence, and one source. I know this oneness, this spirit, this God is all there is. Everything I see, everything I experience is spirit and form. That's wonderful if you use those words. But I want you to get to... <sighs> I want you to go beyond anything you think is light, love, divine, spirit, life, and then go a little bit farther. Go a little bit farther. 
So and you did. do it with a New York accent. <laughs> 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 say this a thousand times, we use words to talk about something that cannot be talked about with words. Mm -hmm. So we use words to move us towards something. Right? Of course. You said before that control is not trusting the human world. Exactly. And, and I often feel like that in this process. It's like, Abraham, I mean anybody that the talk to I don't feel like I gotta do this thing. Where is the connected part of this? Where you know You're jumping to step three to get it done. This is what I want. And I want you to hang out in step one and two, the same way that if you went to the beach and you took a little swim right before the wave. It would pick you up and fly you through the air. I want you to catch the wave. And that is a, a trust experience. It both builds trust and at some level requires trust because there have been times when I've, I've been doing spiritual practice and felt something and just slammed shut. It's like that was just too big. That was too much. And that's okay. You know, I really don't have to be enlightened by Tuesday. Chances are I'm not. <laughs> Chances are enlightenment is really not on my plate this lifetime, and that's okay. But I want to ride the wave every so often. Every so often I want to ride that wave. I want to live in the enlightenment. Well, of course you do, but why? It <laughs> seems easier. Right. You want, you want things to be easier. You want to be relaxed, right? But the truth is, is that before you're enlightened, you chop wood and carry water. Mm -hmm. You go to work, you take care of your kids, you build your house, and after you're enlightened, you chop wood and you carry water. You go to work, you take care of your kids, you build your house. It's just how you do it. So if you want your life to be easier, do your treatments that things show up easily. That you're in balance, you're in the flow, that you're connected with things, that you accept the wonderful good that's pouring into your life, that things click, that you're filled with serendipity and synchronicity, and that life is just a joy. That's your treatment. Not, I know I've got this uh, job, and I know I've got this amount of money, and I know my car starts, and stuff like that. I want you to hang out in the first two steps before you jump to the third step. Because everybody wants the third step. What was it? Hey, uh, what was the treatment? Hey, uh, oh, God, God is, is I, am. I am, this I is know. what I want. Or I, I know, yeah. which is, this is what I want. I am, I know. Yes. So we want to go to the third step because we know that if we go to the third step and if we affirm it, and if it's present, and if it's powerful, and if it's personal, and if it's positive, and if it's whatever the yeah, precise, then we're going to get it. And we are. But we, chances are we're going to be creating from a sense of willing and pushing and making it happen. And it gets very tiresome. If you can learn to catch the wave, this will lift you up and take you. Of, of what it, you are amazing, Mike. You are amazing. And when you get that, your life is amazing. God, look at the kids you created. You are amazing. I want to believe that. And then spend some time there. But it's not the 
you personality, Michael Bayhead. It's the being of light and love, Michael. And to spend time opening to that dimension, that reality, and then it is not a word thing. You may use words. Barbara says, I'm amazing. Barbara says, I'm amazing. Barbara says, I'm amazing. You may use words to open to that, and then you go out into your life, and you do something, and you go, wow. That's the experience. That's the experience. That's why anything that we can do that, that makes us bigger than we think we are is so important. That's why I love sunrises. I've got the greatest stare in the world between my bed and coffee is the sunrise. And I walk up the stair, and all of a sudden the, the um, windowsill is right here, and then it's right here, and I lean on it, I have this giant picture window that has the sunrise. And I stop and just, wow. Takes me out of myself, takes me out of, what time is it? Okay, I need to go get coffee. Okay, it's cold, I gotta turn the furnace on. Where's the dog? You know, it takes me out of all of that stuff into oh, a sunrise. Right there, just right there. So anything that you can do to have that experience is where we want to go. And this five-step spiritual mind treatment will help you get there. Don't look at the hand or the finger, look at the moon, look at the stars. But if you need to find the hand to look up, where is it? Where is the moon? Oh, oh, it's up there. Then that's what the hand is for. David. There was a documentary on recently on TV about uh people doing things the first time, they talked about the first person to fly in a balloon, and a hot air balloon or something, and um, they mentioned that on his second flight or something like that, it was near sunset, and he was still on the ground because they were waiting for something to come along that they could do to make it work, and he saw the sunset, and then he took off and went up into the sun again and got to see the sunset again, and they said he was the first person to ever see a sunset twice in one day in history. Right. And I thought that just kind of blew my mind. It's like, what is that like to have that experience? And did he even recognize it? Right. It's like when we figured out that rainbows are round, but you can only see that from a plane. Right. Yeah. So now, anything that, that makes you go, wow, <laughs> you just got more money. You make it real clear. Wow. You just didn't get sick or you got better. You just got a better relationship, whether with the same person or someone new. I <laughs> would work. Wow. Your life just got better. Because you live in that greater reality than just like this. And this is complaining. This is controlling. Wow. This is where we want to go. I had an experience this weekend on Friday. Of course, you know, my mom went back to the hospital and it was kind of an unexpected thing. And I remember having a lot of, kind of holding my breath, holding in a little bit on the way there, and then relax, and I passed, as I was leaving the hospital, the hospital, my son and his family were on their way to my house, and so I was like, okay, I missed that, but then when I got back to the house and was with them, I got very relaxed very quickly, and just really opened up to the joy of having them there, and it was just like nothing was wrong anywhere. Nothing and is wrong. I saw my daughter-in-law open their freezer and reach into the ice maker and pull out all this ice, and the ice maker hasn't worked in four months. <laughs> great, great. There you go. Great. <laughs> wow. 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 I'm afraid my mother's going to be sick and hurt and die. Wow. Because everything is fine. Everything is fine. Adrian. I don't know if this would help. But I'm feeling actually this one thing. Um, I, I've done meditation with children for a long time, so your little daughter, yeah, she totally gets it. And um, you have children, right? Okay. Who are you from talking to? Mike. Oh, well, Mike. Anyone, yes. But I just felt like I had to tell this. So my wows are very often, um, and have always been since she's been here. So. Um, even before. So I guess a little experiment that I was doing uh, this 
weekend, which was just my Saturday, was that's my explanation of my Saturday, which was all me. She was well. And I thought, oh. And that made me shift. So then I went home, she went to play, and I drew, and I shifted through the night. So I don't know if, if, if it helped. And it was like five seconds, one little thing she said, or I don't even remember what it, what it was. It was just that. And she does this all the time. So I'm sure that you might, I'm not sure, but children, your children, maybe those five second wows. So mindfully watching them even, or just hearing their words, that might be your wow. And then that feeling is that feeling of connected, if that makes sense. Because that's your children, they just know. You know, I ask them, well, what, what does the light what does the light feel like for you? Or what do you think about the light inside or whatever? And they say, oh. um, like one example, she, this little girl said, the light inside just helps my body realize that I'm light. And I thought, of course. You know, so they know. That's just something to share. That really helps. Good, 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 good. So does that make sense on step one? Good. Step two, is having that either inside of you or connected or you're experiencing that. So you want the wow to be your wow. You don't just want to have this, and that's why we don't worship. You know, the whole idea of worship is a subject object relationship. There is someone who is worshiping something outside of themselves. We don't do that. What we want to experience is wow and wow. We want to be able to bring that in and have that connection, that sense of oneness, that experience. So, you know, again, we're talking about things that you don't really have words for, but things that help some people are I'm made in the image and likeness of God, and that is the, the G word, you know, but, but in that traditional background, in, in the Bible lore, is lore, uh, man, human beings, are made in the image and likeness of the divine. What we've done is we've twisted it around to make a, 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 a God, a deity, that's made in the image and likeness of the worst of us. We're angry and vengeful and you know, lightning bolts in one hand and blessings in the other hand, and nobody knows, you know, what's going to get you what, and there's uh, eternal whoopee or eternal damnation to pay for whatever it is that's going on. That's craziness. But if you can flip that around to say, the sunrise is in me. I love to watch the sunrise. But I love more knowing that the sunrise is in me. One of the reasons I love to go to the beach, and, and we did this so many times, is I would just sit there for so long that I would be lost on the waves. Preferably the middle of the summer, 90 degrees, with the sun straight overhead, and it would twinkle on top of every wave, every bit. It would be alive. And dehydration may have had part of this. <laughs> I think that that's part of the Vision Quest secret, too. But I would just get to where I didn't have any sense of myself, although I had a really big sense of myself. That I was not only <coughs> excuse me, looking at the ocean, feeling the sun, but that I was the ocean. And I was just surrendered to the sun. And for me, that's the second step. That's where all, you want power? It's not in control. It's not in complaining. The power is in the experience of wow. 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 And then what have you got to be afraid of? What have you got to be worried of? Nothing. You are the wow. Cars, kitchens, they just show up. You are the wow. And that's the shift. That's the really big shift. That's the really big shift.
that we want to do. We want to shift what we say. We want to shift how we see things. You know, is it an old woman? Is it a new woman? Is it a chalice? Is it two people? We want to be able to shift all of that. Why do we want to shift that? We want to shift that so we'll stop running away from the wow. And if you give yourself half a chance to hang out in the first two steps of treatment, you will get the wow. And if you start talking to yourself and being a chatterbox and all of that, just take a breath. Let it go. You're going somewhere where there are no words. But whatever it is, it is more than you could ever imagine. And that that is what you are. And if you stay with that, you will get a greater experience of yourself. And that greater experience of yourself will translate into a greater experience of life. Whether you just have better days, happier relationships, stop and smell the roses more often, or whether you win the lottery, or <coughs> Prince Charming, or Cinderella, or whoever shows up in your life. It doesn't matter because you've moved into the wow. Is that a question, Jane? Well, it's lift, a, lift your yeah. hand all the way up. Okay. Thank you, thank you. All these little twitches. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, you know, like I live in the wow a lot. However, with me, it just makes me drift off into some other world, and uh, and I kind of lose touch with who I am. And that well, to me, I think you have a couple of James in there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I know that there's a part of you that just goes out there and there's a part of you that you really want to have more focused but yeah. you know I think there are a lot of people who would love to have that moment of drifting you yeah. never get that and I think we've locked up a lot of people as crazy because they got the wow well, that's, yeah, that's, you, know. <laughs> that's not the problem. you are not going to be locked up as crazy well yeah but, uh, <laughs> Jane, Jane, that's not a danger. That may be a past life thing, but that is not a danger in this life. No. If you let yourself go into the wow, you're not going to be locked up. Everything's not going to be lost. You will come back and function. Well, the thing is, if you're talking to yourself or if you're laughing, and I always around to myself, you, you know. Yeah, I always talk to I find myself to be a very... Uh, <laughs> Uh, engaging, comfortable conversation partner. <laughs> I do. How many people love to talk to themselves? How many people laugh when nobody's around? They are perfectly normal. Tom. Yes, yes. I was just going to say, in all the old magic traditions, you, you always have the, the word on one side of the talisman, but the symbol on the other, it's like the yin yang, you know, and, and you always have the four elements, the feeling part, the sensation part, the visualizing part, and the word part. And, you know, you just kind of let them go back and forth between each other. That's where your oneness is. You bring it back to the oneness, and then, you know, you have the words. It's a dance. You know, it's, it's a dance. It's a flow. Some days you're going to be very intellectual. Some days you're going to have all the right words. You're going to sound the way you think you should sound. And other days you just aren't. You're going to flow. You're going to have visions. You're going to hear music. Music is color. You know, you're going to just be out there. And both are equally creative. How do you feel? How are you moving in life? Are you growing and expanding your sense of self? Are you letting go of things that made you play small? Are you willing to trust that there is a feeling inside of you that, that is so familiar to you, even if it's the first time you have felt it, you will know it. Are you willing to trust that and say that that's real and that everything's okay? So as you move into the first and second steps of treatment and hang out there, in my opinion, that's when you're really ready to focus your creation. If you try to start, like part of the trouble with, with Science of Mind or Abraham or whatever, is they want you to start at the creation step before you're ready. You need to get into that 
openness, you know, the, the fish that's affirming the water, be good for that fish to feel the water around them. John would give you a, a, an exercise of treating for something that you have. Like, I would be treating for this lipstick. When I would know that I have it, I have it in my hand. It's just the color that I like. It's kind that stays on for a long time. And I don't know, I just like it. And I look for it and I found it. And now I have it. And I just feel so good that I have it. He would give you that as an exercise so that you get used to knowing that it's here. So that even when it does not appear to be here, you still have that feeling. You know that it's here. That's why in prosperity class, I have you get money. It doesn't matter whether it's ones or hundreds, but get a bunch of them and feel them. Stuff them in your pocket. Put them in your wallet. Take your bank account statement and write a bunch of zeros after the balance. Get that feeling that I've got that. I've got this. So that as you're in the wow, as you're not resisting the flow and the upliftment of all of life as it is manifest as you now, you are open to it and you just focus a little bit. So that the growth that was there a moment ago is in the wow. And it tends to vanish. The thing that wasn't working out is in the wow and it just shows up. You are in the wow. And you know and it can be a specific thing or it can be a generalized treatment that everything within me is healthy in my body, mind, emotions, relationships, and finances. That everything is healthy. It doesn't have to be specific. I'm free. I'm abundant. I live in happiness and peace. <coughs> Jill. Speaking of John, um, I have found his book, Five Steps to Freedom, to be really excellent in getting it clear. Um, sometimes when I'm trying to find the right concept of what is God or you know, what am I trying to affirm, that book is very well written and very uh, short and very clear. So in the bookstore, there are copies of uh, John Waterhouse's book, Five Steps to Freedom, which is on spiritual mind treatment. We didn't feel that there was really a good teaching book, uh, so John wrote one about 10 years ago, and you're right, it's very good. Yeah. <clears throat> so while you're open, you're going to direct. Either direct that just the day goes well, life is such a blessing, I live in bliss. Or, I know that these meetings today just go great because this is spirit meeting, spirit, love is all there is, and love fills that room, and I walk into love, and I'm greeted by love, and Everybody in this meeting is love and form. And then you find that meetings go great, however you want to, to focus it. And then move into gratitude. We're going to talk more about gratitude as we you know, come into November and Thanksgiving and all of that. Gratitude is so powerful. Gratitude is the opposite of your complaining. If complaining takes you into the life you don't want, Gratitude takes you into the life you do want. So whatever it is, you're grateful for it. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. That's all you need to say. I'm so grateful. And then you let it go. And letting it go means that you let go of control. So you do a treatment, you open your eyes, and is it there? Where is it? That's control. You do a treatment, you open your eyes, you're still in the wow. Everything is great. It doesn't matter if it's there or not. It's already here inside of you. So what difference does it make if you can hold it in your hand or not? You've already got it. If you got the call from the attorney that said a relative that you didn't even know died and you're named as sole beneficiary of their multi-million dollar estate and that they'll be sending a limo for you in the morning, are you going to say, well, I don't know, I can't hold it in my hand yet, so I can't believe it, you know, I don't know. No, you're going to go crazy. You're going to call everybody that you know. You're going to get all spiffed up. You're going to get ready for your limo and to move into your new world. You're going to let it go. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> These things happen. Yeah. So you're going to let it go and you're going to move into this awareness. 
that everything, everything, everything already exists. You've already got it. It's already here. It's already now. Isn't it wonderful? And then however time and space comes in to show up in physical form is how it comes in. But you don't have to worry about that because you've already got it. Um, Tom and Jane, and then we're going to close. Okay. I have a step in between recognition and identification. I call it divination. And it, it helps get rid of that control thing. It's a release before you get to identification where you're asking, you know, once you're in your oneness, is this actually what I'm supposed to be doing? Or maybe is there something else to do, you know, before just going, yeah, Does that work for you? Because it's confusing to me. Does that work for you? Yeah. Good. Great, great, great. Yeah. Francis had a sixth step. It's called act like it. <laughs> Jane. Um, all these that you mentioned, this is all fantasy. I, I mean, this oh, is all fantasy. fantasy. <laughs> this is all fantasy. Yes. It is fantasy. We are making this up. And quantum physics has proven that we are making up our reality every, not even every molecule or every atom, but every for every particle, every possibility, every potentiality we are making up as we go along. And the outer solidifies into form and reflects our observation of it. That was why the, the physicists all freaked out back in the 60s and 70s when they got the, the, uh, uh, the tests, the trials, the, the experiments that said that the observer and the observer cannot be separated. You know, you have a random number generator, it generates random numbers. <coughs> Six months later, you put it in a room with someone who goes, plus, 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 plus. And it goes back in time and changes the numbers that were generated to pluses. Wow, you can't separate the outer from the inner, and they can prove it. So yeah, this is all fantasy. Isn't it great? We might as well have a fantasy fun life. That's not exciting. Fantasies are bad. Fantasies are real. Everything we're making up. Everything's going on inside of our heads. Daydreams. Oh, daydreams are great. Sure. Daydreams are great. No, you're tired, Jane. Just go ahead and let yourself daydream. <laughs> So, you might as well have had a life of love, a life of joy, a life of happiness. And since you're going to make it up anyway, you might as well make it up that way. If you find yourself complaining, you are making it up just the other way. So stop it. Back up. Check yourself out. What belief was going on that had you freak out and move into fear and upset? Move into gratitude. Let it go. Open up, let go of the path, move into the wow, and then watch how things shift. And if while you're in that wow state, you want to focus it to prosperity and abundance and joy and all of that, relationships that are filled with love, that uh, you can have mine. The red carpet is rolled out, and those doors that are open, they're great big wooden doors, and they open up, and I move forward into my day. Now that one. I share. Okay. However you want to direct it, but direct it from the wow. Direct it from that sense that you are greater than anything you've ever thought of before, or anything you've ever experienced before. And you'll be amazed at how you shift, not shift from the person honking at you in the car, but you shift at a very deep level about who you believe yourself to be and how you believe life to work. And that's really what it's all about. Any questions or comments before we close? Great. Take out what you're going to get. Live the wow. Give it the wow. <laughs>
that the edges are still moving out. We can't find the edges, but what we know about them is that they are still moving out. That's our physical home, is abundant. Stars in the sky, grains of sand on the beach, drops of water in the ocean, that's our physical home. That is the effect of the great cause of life coming into form. And that is what we're made of. The same thing that makes this amazing world, this huge, expanding universe that is what we are. We are made out of abundance and prosperity. It is the very life that lives us. And so we open to that sense of it all. We let ourselves let go of any sense of physicality and we move out. We move out. Whether we're dancing on the sunbeams or riding the winds, whether we're touching the stars or dancing through the Milky Way, we move out into a greater sense of awareness of who we are. And we know that this experience of life supports us and it lifts us. We know that we are connected with everyone and everything. And so that prosperity and abundance that is our very nature touches all wonderful things in our lives, money, opportunity, time, substance, surprises, serendipity, synchronicity, happiness that touches that because that is what we are and we are one so we have it now. So I claim and affirm for each and every one of us that we live this prosperous, blessed life, that we have more than enough, more than enough air, more than enough time, more than enough friends, more than enough money, more than enough opportunity, more than enough energy. We have more than enough. That's the truth of us. It's our nature. We came with it. And so we move into gratitude. We're grateful for this. We're grateful for this rich and abundant life. And we give this gift tonight out of our gratitude, out of our richness, and know that life returns it back to us. It is all one and the same. We stand clear in who we are. We know that life supports us in every way. <clears throat> and that is the energy that we claim for ourselves and each other this night. I know that each one of us comes together to make this center for spiritual living all that it was ever meant to be. It is a place of peace, a beacon of light, a tower of strength, and a fountain of wisdom that touches the lives of all who call it home. So it is. So it is. Hold the energy. We just went to wow. Don't talk it out. We just got wow. Take the wow. Stay in wow. Spirit is. <coughs> spirit is a blessing. Spirit is light. Spirit is love. Spirit gives to us without reservation, without hesitation, without limitation. Right here and right now, we are accepting that blessing of life as us. Spirit in form as us. Right here and right now. And so I know that that energy right here and right now has awakened us and quickened us. It has moved us into a greater expression of who we are. And in so doing, not only does it change the lives of everyone in this room, but it changes the lives of everyone on this planet and beyond. And so it is. So it is. Love you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful night.